Got to make sure I get a ground. So Frank, what do we got coming up next? So we're getting ready to cut and stuff. So what I do on this is I use a straight edge and a plasma cutter is my favorite way to cut these. But I got a special straight edge. I got this right here. Some people like it, some people hate it, you know. But I got a hole drilled in each end. And then I got a ratchet strap that I use that holds this thing tight to the cooker. And I just make sure and get my line marked up here or measured up here. And when I cut that vertical run, I have a drag tip on my plasma cutter that'll just ride right against that. But look here, we got a problem. This is in my way. This line, I won't be able to get. I could probably lay it up there and do it, but it's gonna try to twist the ruler. And I gotta get them out of there anyway. So I decided real quick, we would just show you how to get rid, how I get rid of those. Um, it's easy, just take plasma cutter and cut it, but then you wind up with a hole that's not perfectly round and it's kind of tough to fit with, you know, you wind up doing a whole lot of grinding and it's tough to get it, get your piece in there right where nobody knows it was ever there. So I gotta show you a little trick here I do. that blew off. So did you find the piece? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it was sitting on top of that hammerhead. Oh, okay. So I what's gotta... with the uh, long sleeves? Well, we got to wear our PPE, you know, and technically this is not a flame-proof shirt, but it is uh, denim, you know, and a lot of times, you know, if my, if my good welding shirt's dirty. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm, when I'm, working with this I want I don't want anybody to know there was ever a bung there um, when I do it and you'll notice like when we're grinding and stuff we're not gouging in there we're feather edging everything and making it smooth because if it doesn't show right now when you put paint on it it'll show what I do is I take a hole saw that's as close to but bigger than the weld puddle as possible and I don't cut it with the hole saw but I, I mark it with the whole saw, right? So you could just set it on here and make a magic marker mark. Um, I tend to go just a little bit further than that because, you know, not everybody can cut perfectly square, you know, perfectly round. So a good way, if you really want it to be round, is to take a, a piece of thin material. This is actually a slug out of another hole we drilled. And uh, because the whole saw needs something to grab for the center bit to stay in its place, so if you just take a piece like this and just tack it up on top, doesn't have to be level and everything, just what you're looking for is something to hold that bit straight. And I'm gonna put like three tacks on there or four tacks or something. And then that gives me a place for my bit to stay while I'm drilling. And I'm not gonna drill really deep. I'm just gonna drill deep enough to where the, the sides of this bit, it marks all the way around. Then I'm gonna take my plasma cutter and I'm gonna cut that hole out using that plasma cutter or that scratch from this because what I can do is I can take this same hole saw and I can mark my other piece. Then I've got two identical pieces to fit in that hole. V-groove it, weld it, flap disc it, nobody ever knows it's there. We got the bung cut out of there and I usually cut it to where I can clean the hole up a little bit so I like I bevel inward. Um, I try to get as round as I can and I try to stay on the, the outside edge of my scribe or in. That way I can clean this up with a file or something or a grinder, whatever I can fit in there. But anyway, the most important thing is it's out of my way now. So you can see this thing's had a few dents and dings in it from previous doors I was cutting in tanks and stuff. So I generally pick out the straightest edge and it looks like probably this side. So I lay this thing on here like this and I, I get these holes where I can hook my ratchet strap up. These holes, I got a hole on each end of it. So I'll go over here, if I can get it in there. 
like that. And just pull it tight, kind of close. And then we'll line up on our hole. About like that. And I know that on this drag tip right here, I put a brand new one on for the door. Between this edge and this edge, you know, or between the center of my of my uh, torch and the edge that I drag against is a quarter of an inch. So I uh, I get this lined up about a quarter of an inch from the my mark. Sometimes it's better just to go from the number one like that, and then I look at the bottom. Looks like I got to go over just a hair. Okay, now I'm gonna go around there and I'm gonna. Tighten that just a hair. Now, before I really crank it down, I'm going to get my fine adjustment hammer so I can tap tap. If you just work that just a little bit as you go, pretty darn close. Looks darn close to me. Now we'll tighten it down and we'll check one more time. Straight as a die if my cutter will cut straight. I like it. So Frank, what are we going to do next? We're going to cut the, uh, the straight lines. This is the part where it's helpful to have a buddy. I mean, you can do the whole ratchet strap thing here if you wanted to, I guess, or you can just hold it. I'm pretty good with holding it sometimes, but in this case, I got a Scott so he can hold one end of it down for me, maybe. Yeah. So I went ahead and cut my doors with plasma and I leave just a little piece in each corner like that. Just a little piece just to hold that door in place. I'm, I'm actually really impressed because like this thing didn't talk to me at all when I was cutting. Which what I mean by talking to me is like you'll hear it cracking and popping and creaking and twisting. And that's, you know, just relieving pressure from the guy that put this tank together, you know whenever this thing was welded together or whatever they did to it to stress it out, you know, before they put it together. Anyway, it didn't move at all. My personal opinion is that you can cut with a plasma cutter or a slicer disc or whatever you want. It ain't going to have anything to do with whether or not the doors warp on you. Cutting out a little piece of metal out of a big old tube, it's going to relax. Things are going to move around. But anyway, for now, uh, we got this thing cut out and I, don't, I like to leave the door attached in the corners because I'm going to take a slicer disc and run through here which is going to help me clean my hole up a little bit before I ever get the door out of there. Then when I'm done I'll take a hacksaw blade or a sawzall and there's not much material here. I'll just cut through that with that with that saw blade so I can get a perfect corner and then uh, we'll take a just a flat file and clean it up when we're done. Two things real quick. This is a Metabo. It's got a clutch built into this. Never use a slicer wheel without a guard or without the clutch, the clutch kind of grinder because what you see here, the reason it took three wheels for me to do this basically is because as you're as you're cleaning this up, these this is moving. 
and it'll pinch this blade. And if you had this in a regular, like a DeWalt grinder or some kind of just regular angle grinder, it would grab this blade and just shear it in half and it would part of it go through your head. So that's thing number one. Thing number two is uh, you saw I cut it with the plasma cutter, but then I ran the, the grinder back through it. And the reason I did that is because I want to get I want to get this you know cleaned up as much as possible in here in a good straight fashion. I might as well do it while it's connected, and it'll give me a good uniform gap all the way around the door just in case my cutter moves. Like right here, I ran over a piece of a piece of dross, and my cutter went eh, eh, like that. Right? Well, you might have that happening. I mean, this is a really dang straight cut going through here i mean and you can actually if you look in close enough you can see the movement in the door there's nothing you're going to do to prevent that right now uh a lot of guys before they cut these corners out they'll go ahead and attach their hinges on here um we never do that you can do that if you want but we never do that because basically we're going to wind up having to work this cook chamber to fit the doors or the doors to fit the cook chamber one or the other and uh, the last thing I want is a welded hinge welded on here where I've got the hinges in the way. Then I got to cut them off and pull my door off. It's just easier, in my opinion, to work this door without it being on the cooker. We're going to come down here and uh, just knock these corners out. You see, we plasma cut, and there's always a dross on the back side, on the inside of this. Mm -hmm. Hacksaw blades cut one way, right? We push or pull. And. Uh, just got to get that dross knocked off the back side there. Ready? There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's how you cut out some doors. If you notice, I took on the bottom corner because that's the first place everybody's gonna look. And I took that hacksaw and kind of cleaned that up. Anyway, you can use a file to kind of clean in that corner tight. I do run like a flap disc around and clean up and bevel. Not bevel like a V, but just knock the edge down. So the next step in this case would be to go ahead and clean this hole up and at some point we'll be ready to mount these doors and start working them and make sure everything's true to each other. So anyway guys, like and subscribe to the channel if you don't mind, uh, help us out. And then, uh, you know, also leave comments and stuff down, in, down below. Uh, wherever you're watching, I'd like to see what your thoughts are. If you guys want, you have questions or whatever, want us to elaborate on some of the points we did, we can do other videos. So in the meantime, thanks for watching and go back to our channel and check out the rest of our stuff. Uh, you know, this is uh, a series now that we're doing with this stick burner stuff. So anyway, till next time, see ya.